Yes, uh, good, good morning, everybody. <coughs> I'm very happy to be, to be with you this morning. My name is Benoit Veilleret. I am from France, so I have a very strong French accent. <laughs> so if you don't understand, just let me know and, and stop me, <laughs> right? Um, OK, so the purpose of this presentation is to try to draw lessons from, uh, from the, so some work which has been taking place in Bangladesh also, but on agriculture, food security, and nutrition. The main question is, what is a CIP? Uh, I, be I became a friend of Bangladesh in 2010 when my boss here sent me to, to Dhaka and said, OK, you go there and you help the government develop the CIP. And I said, what? What is a CIP? <laughs> <laughs> so he said, don't ask silly questions. Just go there and, and, and you will figure out. So uh, I think it's important that, that we, we spend some time on defining what we talk about. And, and uh, I think the, the, the experience that we have had uh, developing together with some colleagues, two of them are here, Alberto and Tommaso, uh, is, is important because we, we both deal with multi-sector uh, uh, investment plan, right? We talk about agriculture, food security, nutrition. You talk about forestry, environment, climate change. So there are very lo a lot of similarities. We talk about multi-sector type of, of, of plan. And, and we can draw some experience from, from this work there. Uh, so, uh, on, on the right hand side, you can see this uh, kind of uh, some of these uh, cartoons from these stupid animals. And one of them is saying, when you don't know where to go, you have to go and as quickly as possible. So, let's not do this. Let's try to take a little bit of time to, uh, uh, to figure out uh, where we go. Uh, so, first, I will, I will uh, I mean, this is my presentation in five, five steps, basically. Uh, the first one is to, to to kind of put investment plan in the broader context, what are we talking about? The second one is uh, someone was asking this morning, you know, how to start an uh, investment plan. So we'll, we'll uh, review also what were the starting points of the investment plans a few years ago when we started this work. Then the, the core of the presentation is, is to, to um, present a bit more deeper uh, what, you know, what, uh, uh, what is the investment plan, what are the purposes, uh, uh, what are the boundaries, you know, the delineation, the objectives, uh, and then we'll spend some time explaining, you know, the, uh, the monitoring system. But this will be followed by more in, in more detail by my two other colleagues tomorrow and the day after. Then I will try to draw some lessons which can be, uh, you know, relevant to the work that you are about to do on forestry, uh, natural resource and climate change. And then I will finish just by one slide on, 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 on key questions uh, on which we can start debating, and, and uh, I think there will be a discussion uh, facilitated by, by Marco, uh, probably. OK, so what are we talking about here? Um, you know, we, we heard about uh, an investment plan, a, a country investment plan, right? Well, let me look at my notes. Uh, but um, we have to put it in the broader context. And, and this morning, in the expectations, I understand that the country investment plan was one thing, but there were also other expectations, right? And uh, we talked about what are the policy frameworks. We you make the presentations. What, are the, what is the policy context in your country? Uh, we talk about a lot of co capacity development, right? Uh, we heard about the governance, the coordination mechanism between the different sectors. Uh, we also uh, heard about the need to have broad consultations with different ministries involved. And um, I think an important element also is the commitment uh, by different uh, stakeholders, the government, but also uh, development partners to, to support uh, the initiative. And we talk about you know, uh, using knowledge, applying knowledge to investment, right? So I think it's, uh, it's important to, to uh, not to only talk about the, the CIP, and I understand that the project in which you are involved uh, is also trying to cover some of these issues. I just want to show this chart, which is basically the, um, the kind of uh, principles of the work we are doing on, on agriculture, food security, and nutrition in FAO, is that we say we need to, to, uh, to deal with different, uh, combine different type of supports to the countries so that we can have an, an impact, right? One is to, is to look at the policies and the programs. So the investment plan would be, part, would be one of these, right? So this is number one, but it's not enough. We need also to, uh, and this is number two, and this was mentioned by different people, we need to mobilize the right human and, and finan financial resources, right? Uh, to finance these policies and these programs, right? 
Third, we need also the right governance and the institutional setup and the coordination mechanisms. We need also to develop partnerships. And then the fourth one is to say, well, you know, we, we need also to base uh, any kind of action on knowledge, on evidence. So these are kind of four uh, principles um, that now FAO is, 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 is trying to, uh, uh, to apply to its own, wor own work in support of the countries to develop also these kind of investment plans, right? And by the way, these, these kind of four principles were, were um, to some extent inspired from the work also in Bangladesh uh, a few years ago. Okay, now uh, number two, uh, what, what were the starting points? Uh, as I was, sorry, as I was saying, the first starting point is commitment. Uh, when we started this work, there was a very strong commitment by the Bangladeshi government. Uh, so we, you can see uh, the Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina uh, in a ceremony which was launching the first version of the country investment plan in 2010. So it's just to show that there was, a, a, at the highest level, there was a strong commitment. And I think it is an important condition so that the work you are doing is also supported at the, at the higher level. You can see also uh, commitment from um, uh, international partners, because in the middle uh, you see Mr. Rajiv Shah, who is the, uh, the administrator of USID. So we came all over to, uh, to Bangladesh also to support the process, right? Uh, not in the middle, so in the middle you have the Minister Radzak, uh, the, the former Minister of Food on the right hand side. So, so it's just to show that I think one of the conditions for, for also success is, is the commitment at a high level. Um, sorry, another uh, starting point, and that, that was a sense of the, uh, the questions on what is the policy framework, is that we, had, uh, we started this work, we could benefit from uh, what we call national food policy, which was a comprehensive uh, policy for uh, food security and nutrition, right? One of the challenges uh, in, in your work, but also in our work, is that you can do, like uh, the presentation from Bangladesh, you can do a long list of policies and strategies, right? And, and I suspect this is one of the issues, and you were also raising the issue that some are contradictory to each other. So what we could benefit at the time from already an, an existing policy work which had brought together the different sector policies and tried to, to make some kind of sense out of them in a, in a comprehensive food policy, which would, uh, you know, incorporate all these different uh, uh, policies. So the, the policy was, was developed in 2006, but in 2008, it was converted into a plan of action, right? And it was a way to coordinate uh, the different interventions from the government and to align the development support to this policy, right? And basically, the country investment plan uh, for agriculture, food security and nutrition in Bangladesh was a kind of co uh, an attempt to convert this policy into you know, investment, resource mobilization, and action on the ground, right? And the third uh, starting point is that we had already also an existing uh, project, so similar to, to the project we are talking about, which is called the National Food Policy Capacity Strengthening Project, which had been going on for a few years, a few years there and which objective was to really enhance the, uh, the, the capacity, the, both the human and institutional capacity, to formulate, monitor, and implement the comprehensive food security policies and investment. Right? So we had this in place already, um, with FAO as the implementing agency. Uh, donors were, were supporting, had been supporting for, I think now, eight years or nine years, right? So USID, but also the EU. And then you had a uh, very strong also a commitment by the government. Uh, the Ministry of Food was coordinating, but on behalf of, I think, 13 ministries are involved in this exercise, right? And you had involvement of many stakeholders. So uh, these were the starting points. And I understand that under your initiative, you are, you are trying to bring these different things together, right? Capacity development is one of the components, right? The development of the CIP and this consultation process will be part of uh, of, of your work. Okay, third now, uh, what, what, is the, um, what is the CIP? Um, okay, the, the, um, the CIP is this, <laughs> to, just to summarize. It's a, it's a short document, as you can see. Uh, this one is from, from Tommaso. I was looking in my office, I didn't find any, <laughs> anyone because I've been giving to different people. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay, good. No, the, the, uh, I actually gave my copy to, to colleagues from Myanmar, 
because I was in a, in a workshop in Bangkok. Okay. Oh, well, that's, you, are, you are better equipped than me. <laughs> and, uh, and actually, there, there was, yes, you can, you can distribute to just to, uh, it's a, but just to show that it's a very short document, right? It's, um, it's not a big, big thing. So I think we have to relax a little bit by thinking that it would be a you know, very, very complex uh, type of thing. Um, but it's, uh, the good thing with, with this copy is, is that it is used. You know, it's a very old one. It looks old one because it is actually used. It's not, it's not rem it doesn't remain on the shelf. It's used by people to look at it and, and see what, uh, you know. Uh, so that's, this, this is the other good thing. Okay, now, um, I hope I'm not, I'm not going to, to confuse. Um, but um, I think we have one of the first things that we did uh, when we started to work on this, you know, on this uh, exercise in Bangladesh was to kind of have a, a collective brainstorm. And I think uh, the, the, the role of the steering committee, because I understand you are a steering committee of the project, is going to be important to, to really figure out what, what are you aiming at, what do what you think should be the purposes of the, of the investment plan, right? Um, some of my colleagues often, often say, um, well, first I, I need to, to give a bit of background, you know, uh, about the, the, the name investment plan. I was talking to, to, to Madame from Tanzania. Uh, we have uh, to give credit to Africa because the, the concept of investment plans came from, from Africa and the CADEP, which is, the, the, you know, the, the common framework that Africa has developed for agricultural development. And the investment plans is one of the main, you know, step in the process of CADEP which is supposed to attract you know, uh, funding from, from the government and partners. So the um, investment plans come, they, they are called they are the national agricultural investment plans. In this case, we talk about country investment plan, and it's, it's a bit of a broader uh, scope. It's not only agriculture, but it's broader than agriculture, right? Um, but some of my colleagues often say, uh, uh, an investment plan is not a plan. It's not, it's not a plan in that way. It's not, you know, it's not supposed to be, uh, you know, very big and detailed, you know, plan on who is going what every, everywhere. I think it has to be, and that's why I, I was showing this copy, it's a more simple tool. It's a, it's, a, it's a framework. It's a common framework on which everybody agrees on where to invest and for which purpose, basically, right? So, so we should not aim at going too much into detailing each single activity and putting detailed costs on each activity because if we uh, if we go into that that uh, road i think we'll will maybe work in 5 years time we'll still <laughs> be working on investment plans we have to simplify our lives and 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 you know show, uh, consider it as as a big picture right for for investment it's a, it's a mean to to coordinate and to harmonize that was already mentioned uh, because we talk about multi sector a type of investment, and we need really to coordinate the various ministries, but also the main stakeholders in the private sector and also development partners. And we need to harmonize the way um, the way we work. Uh, we need to avoid duplications, as as was mentioned right, right before. Right? Um, it's also a tool to uh, to increase the convergence of both the domestic and the external uh, sources of fund. Uh, around the common goal, and I will come back, I, I put it in red because I will come back on this because this is quite important. We talk about result-based investment, and, and Alberto, uh, this afternoon or, or tomorrow, this afternoon we'll, we'll really spend more time on, on, on explaining this result-based uh, type of approach, which is, I think, critical for the investment plan. It's also a tool for policy dialogue, uh, because as we are saying, uh, you, someone was mentioning the kind of contradiction between different policies, and I think it's a... Uh, the way of uh, the process of developing a CIP is a very good forum for discussion and sometimes debate um, because not everybody agrees. And I understand that for, uh, for your sector, this might be even more important than, than for our sector, right? The different, the conflicting uh, land use that were mentioned and so on and so on. Um, it's a way to, uh, obviously it's a way to identify uh, investment opportunities and needs for investment and gaps for investment. You know, when you look at the policies, you look at how they have been implemented and some part of the policies have not been implemented, they, they, they require more investment. So it's a, uh, it's, it's a way to prioritize some of the needs, uh, you know, to, to again to pursue the common goal I was mentioning before. 
Um, now uh, you will have to find a trade-off, and this is probably one of the most difficult part of it, between a comprehensive plan, uh, which basically, uh, you know, if you have different ministries, different agencies involved, the risk is to end up with a Christmas tree, or I don't know how to call it, but a very, very broad and big thing. Right, uh, while if you want it to be more effective, you might need to, to try to prioritize, right? To, to make sure that the plan you are proposing, it might be a five-year plan or 10-year plan, depending on you, is, is realistic, is implementable, right? It's not, it's not just a collection of everything um, that deals with, uh, with climate change, uh, forestry, and environment. Um, it's a way to, uh, to, f to identify financing, financing gaps. And actually, that was the first, the main purpose of the uh, Nag uh, National Agricultural Investment Plan in the Africa CADEP, right? To, to find what are the gaps so that both the Ministry of Finance and the development partners could commit some funds to, f to fill these gaps. Uh, an important aspect of it, and that's why I think that's uh, more than half of, of this <laughs> investment plan, is actually an inventory of the existing and ongoing and planned uh, operations and investment in the sector. It, uh, uh, we found it uh, very useful to, uh, uh, and this is a bit, uh, um, how to say, uh, not painful, but a difficult exercise to, to go and collect all what is done you know, uh, by the government, but also by different different partners uh, in agriculture, food security and nutrition. So that we have a good understanding of what is done and what are the gaps. And then, uh, last but not least, uh, it's a tool to monitor, track and evaluate the investments in the sectors we are talking about. Okay. Now, uh, I just want to, to come back to the, 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 the common goal. Uh, I will not spend too much time because, uh, because Alberto will, will come back. But the common goal of, um, you know, of both the, f the food policy and the uh, investment plan is to un ensure sustain sustained food security for all people of the country at all time. Okay? Uh, it's my, it might appear quite broad, but actually it's, I think it's important to, to define what we are talking about. Right? Uh, because, for instance, if you take this, the agriculture is just a mean to get to food security. Agriculture, so um, the purpose is not necessary to, uh, to increase the agricultural output or whatever, it's to ensure food security and nutrition to the people. So I think in, in, in your case, I see that you will have to go into some debates on what is your main purpose of the investment plan. Is it to protect the forest or is it to you know, mitigate uh, or adapt to climate change? Is it to protect the environment? I mean, um, they might be complementary, but what is the final aim of, of investment plan? I think it's, it's, it's going to be quite important. Um, and then uh, why, while the uh, objective is, is uh, the, the goal is quite broad, uh, some, some indicators were developed. And this is going to be quite an important step in your, in your process. And in this case, we have three big indicators, uh, which is the prevalence of undernourished people, the prevalence of child stunting, and the prevalence of underweight children under five. Okay, so these are three indicators that are measured on a regular basis and which gives an indication on, on whether the country is, is going in the right direction, right? Uh, and then uh, below that, uh, but I will not g uh, get into detail now, you have lower level indicators, right? So it's, it's going to be, I think, important in your case to, to figure out what, uh, what indicators of success you, you, you see are, are relevant to, to your work. So now, oops, going too fast here. Okay, now um, again, I've, I put at the top agriculture, food security, nutrition. In our case, forestry, climate change, environment. In your case, uh, what a very important um, uh, aspect uh, and task during the process of, of working out an investment plan is to is to put boundaries. You know, what, what how do you delineate? Um, when when you talk to people, food security, you can put everything, right? <laughs> Uh, climate change, I think environment, also I think you can put many, many things in it, right? So it's important to, um, to agree, and, and this is I think one of the role of the steering committee, uh, to agree on what you think should be in, what, sh what you think should not be in, right? So that you, you have a better, uh, you know, um, a better focused investment plan. 
So in our case, uh, public investment, okay, sorry, it, it goes on its own. Um, in our case, uh, we um, say the investment plan is about public investment, right? So we don't count on private investment. Obviously, there are measures in the investment plan, sorry, that, that are, uh, you know, try to, uh, to be uh, supportive to private investment, but, but this, you know, we, we cannot plan for private uh, people. So basically, we will limit ourselves to, pri to public investment, right? Uh, secondly, we said uh, it's about investment. So in the case of Bangladesh, we are talking about the ADP, which is a process of, of planning investment, but we exclude everything which is operational, what you call the revenue budget, right? So it's not, it's not part of it, it's, uh, it's, it's just the investment per se. Um, third, uh, when you go into the substance of investment, uh, we said, for instance, uh, there is a strong component on, on food access, right? And on food access, you can, again, you can put so many things, right? So we said, okay, let's limit ourselves to those, uh, you know, uh, activities on food access, which are directly rele um, relevant to agriculture and rural development. So we didn't put the entirety of all safety net programs. We didn't put the food distribution, which is also part of the, of the Bangladesh uh, you know, a way of ensuring food security. Um, for instance, also on all the area of agricultural uh, extension research, um, we said we are going to specific uh, investment in support of extension and training, but we are not going to cover the entire education system of the country. It's too, it's too, it's too broad, right? We have to limit ourselves again. Uh, on nutrition, uh, because nutrition is a, is a core element of, of the investment plan, there was a lot of debate, I can tell you, and there are still debates, right, Tomaso? <laughs> uh, we said we, we probably limit on ourselves on nutrition, some of the nutrition-specific activities and what we call nutrition-sensitive activities. So there might be, in your case, climate-smart agriculture, climate-sensitive you know, interventions. But we are not going to cover the entire health and sanitation uh, system, right? It's too broad. So, so this is, I think, going to be an important uh, step, which is really to, to put the right boundaries uh, in the investment plan to what to do. So now this is a result of, of the work that, that, was, that was done. Uh, we basically um, <coughs> divided this, uh, this investment plan to three big components, right? One, and this is following, uh, this is kind of uh, following the definition of food security and nutrition by FAO, where we talk about food availability access and utilization. But it's just to show that, that we have basically 12, uh, 12 programs, um, 12 investment programs. So the, the, in short, the, the country investment plan is a set of 12 complementary programs because all are contributing to the same goal, right? Um, so if I take the third one, is uh, is basically talking about agricultural research and extension uh, to uh, uh, to contribute to diverse agriculture, because again, for better nutrition, you need diverse agriculture and sustainable. And here we talk, by the way, a lot about climate change also, right? To to make sure that the agriculture is also climate climate smart. Uh, so then, I mean, I'm not going to read all the 12 programs, um, but uh, these programs basically they were uh, they were they were not negotiated, but they they were kind of identified through through a, pro a consultation process, right? Um, and 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 the the, uh, the challenge was within each of these of these programs to uh, to try to focus not 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 to cover everything under the earth under each of these uh, headings right. So now uh, this I think Alberto you are going to cover this right so in some in some other way or I mean it's uh, it's just to to explain that. Um, that the, the, uh, the importance also that we attached in developing investment plan into the monitoring side of it, right? Uh, because uh, in order for, for this document not to stay on the shelf, it has to, to stay alive, and we have to be able to report on, on a regular basis on uh, how much was achieved, uh, what remains, what gaps are remaining, right? So, uh, so here you can see the result chain. Basically, on the right hand side, you have the, the big picture, right? The big goals I was I was mentioning: ensure sustained food security, 
again, you will have to decide on, on yours. And then I was mentioning, you can see in blue, uh, in the upper side, you can see the, the investment plan itself with the three components I was mentioning, the 12 programs, and then we have, we go, we go deeper into the details with 40 priority investment areas. Um, and then you can, we can identify from these investment areas the various projects that contribute to, uh, to these 12 programs, right? And basically, this is a, a way to, to look at also the, uh, the kind of resources that are allocated or are not allocated along these 40 investment areas and 12 um, uh, CIP programs, right? Um, but again, uh, there will be more, uh, more to be explained after by my two, two colleagues. So uh, again, uh, there is an annual uh, monitoring report, which is, I think, the one you were just distributed or, or not? Three types of documents. Right. Monitoring, monitoring report, which is a small one. Um, this yeah, is. One step for one campaign. One step for one campaign. Yeah. One step for one campaign. Like this. Yeah, three three, three, Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay. This is uh, part of the documents I was mentioning. So, uh, since this, this, this work was done in 2011, I think we have had uh, every year a monitoring report. So in 2012, 13, and the, 14, the 2014 is uh, just was issued uh, two months ago, three months ago, and this is the one you have. It's it's for me. It's a very it's a huge source of information, and it's really showing the result of the work. You know, uh, someone was asking what are the benefits of investment plans. I think this is one of the main benefits, which is really to to report in one document. The, the, pr the progress the country is doing against the high-level goals of food security and nutrition in this case, the evolution of the policy, the way, the extent to which the policies are implemented or not implemented, you know, some of the bottlenecks that are faced, but also, and, and as a result of the investment plan, what are the public expenditure by key ministries uh, in support of, of these investment plans, and what are the remaining gaps, right? Um, so, so there is also an annual update of the investment plan because, because uh, you know, more projects are, are getting it, right? And in some way, it's a living document. Uh, um, and, and, and the monitoring report really gives a kind of dynamic, uh, you know, picture of, of the way things are moving year after year, right? And it's a very good tool for transparency and accountability. Everybody can access it. And it's a tool for informing those who want to invest in agriculture, food security, and nutrition. Those being uh, the Ministry of Finance and the planning, you know, the, the planning Commission from the government side, but also development partners. Um, I was recently doing some work together with the World Bank on, on, on trying to advise the World Bank on, on you know, where to invest in the next five years in agriculture. One of my main source of information was the report. You know, saying, okay, if you want to invest in agriculture, you should you should look at it, you should harmonize, you should you know, align with, with what has been identified in the CIP and what has been identified as the gaps as of today in 2014. So this is one, one of the value addition of this work, right? Um, oops, oops, what is that? Um, okay, this, oh man, sorry. I should be careful with what I say. <laughs> okay, uh, again, uh, just to show, uh, just to show the picture, I mean, the big picture, the goals I was mentioning, uh, which were we had three indicators, right? Undernourishment, underweight, and stunting. And basically, we have been following since 2007 8 until, uh, until uh, today. And then uh, there is a target uh, which has been set into, uh, into the investment plan, uh, the food policy investment plan itself, right? So you have the target and you can see the evolution, right? Oh, mais pourquoi ça bouge comme ça? Okay, this, uh, Thomas, you are going to spend some time on this one, right? So it's just, um, just in a nutshell, uh, basically it's to show, um, the, to visualize the, the mobilization of resources, of financial resources, which is, you know, one of the main aim of this investment plan is 
someone, I mean, many were, you know, saying, well, you know, we, do, we have difficulties to attract, uh, you know, uh, money for, to support our activities. So, um, I mean, partly uh, we cannot claim it's entirely as a result of the CIP, but it's, I think, partly as a result, you can see that there have been an increase in, in, in some of the, you know, amount of money which have been, uh, which have been uh, mobilized. And as a result of it, uh, there is a decrease in, in the financing gap. So it, it shows that things are moving, right, in the right direction. And this is a very nice uh, spider net <laughs> that, that I think Tomado will better explain. But it is to visualize, you know, in green, basically you have, for, I mean, each of the uh, directions is one program, right? So you have 12 programs, but then you have also the three components which are highlighted, right? The, uh, uh, the access one, the utilization one, and the availability one. And for each of these areas, uh, in green, we have shown, you know, the progress towards mobilizing money that is required. So in green, it was, uh, I think, uh, last year, after two years, right? And then in red is uh, this year, after three years. So you see there is an expansion, so there is a, a kind of increase in the, in the money which is, which is um, uh, mobilized, but also uh, implemented. Uh, through this, through this work, right? Um, I think I, I have said enough. Yes, um, I've said enough on the on the monitoring. I think we'll we'll, we'll come back to it later on. But I just wanted to show this this uh, this picture, which shows that monitoring, uh, which shows the, the kind of cycle we have, right? We have we started from the policy frameworks and then uh, you know feeding into strategies on how to develop you know the, the, the sectors. And then leading into a, a plan of action, but also an investment plan in this case, right? Uh, leading to implementation and then monitoring. But the monitoring, uh, the good thing is that we don't only monitor implementation, but we monitor every step, right? We monitor the policy implementation. We monitor the way the strategies are, are being put in, uh, you know, in, in practice. We monitor the way the in investment plan has been, uh, has been implemented, the resources which have been mobilized for it. And we monitor implementation, obviously, the delivery, as I was mentioning. So now these two slides were, were basically uh, prepared by uh, uh, one of my colleagues from, from the Ministry of Food from Bangladesh. Right? I just took them uh, because um, uh, and I, I asked him, you know, what do you think are the challenges it's still, you know, with, with the investment plan? Now you have an investment plan in place, a strong monitoring system. What do you think, uh, you know, how the big challenges you are facing? So basically was explaining, um, again, uh, there are still, you know, uh, an issue which, uh, which relate to how to translate this C the CIP and the programs into projects and concrete actions, right? Uh, so one of the conditions uh, for this to happen is that we need to make sure to mainstream the CIP in the different ministries, right, and in the different development partners, right? So uh, in, in your case, if, if, you, if the Ministry of Environment and Forestry, right, is in charge, and if you involve other ministries, you have to make sure that the other ministries are on board, right? Uh, like uh, in our case, the Ministry of Food is coordinating, but they need to make sure also that the Ministry of Agriculture, the Ministry of uh, Fisheries and Livestock is uh, on board, right, and is actively participated. So sometimes they face some difficulties that, that some partner ministries see the CIP as uh, something of the uh, Ministry of Food. So it should not be something of the Ministry of Forestry and Environment. I think the Ministry of Environment and, 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 and Forestry should act on behalf of the entire government, basically, right? So there is a need for better communication and coordination with, with top managers so that this, this is even stronger. Um, and uh, uh, my colleague Maboub uh, was explaining that uh, there is also a weakness in targeting the most official, uh, the most relevant officials in the different ministries. So the, I think you will need to, to, to spend some time on identifying the, the right level of, of interaction, right? Um, and then uh, the second uh, thing challenge is how to use, to utilize this, uh, this monitoring data, so the monitoring report you have, uh, so that it's accessible by all those persons' concerns, right? By all the partners in the government and outside, right? So, so there is a need some, uh, for some better communication, maybe some, uh, there is every time a, a, a national launching event, which is very good to communicate the result, uh, and these kind of things have to be uh, part of it, right? Communication is, 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 is key, really essential. 
And then the third challenge is, uh, and some it was also mentioned for your sectors, is the, uh, the kind of competition, right, between different sectors on accessing uh, you know, scarce uh, resources from, from the budget, but also from development partners, right? So this, basically, you will have to face these challenges, but okay, that's part of the, of the process. Now, um, again, to come back to, uh, to uh, CIP, what is a CIP? So, um, obviously, agriculture, food security, and nutrition is different from, you know, environment, forestry, and climate change. So, I think the, the CIP might be different from, I mean, will be obviously very different from this one. Um, and it will depend on the, on the existing background in your sectors and the commitment also of, 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 of your government. It will need, depend obviously on the needs and the priorities of the sectors, right? It's, it's very important to, uh, uh, for instance, in our case, one of the big priorities was really to reduce uh, uh, child uh, malnutrition, right? So it was clear priorities. So around this, you know, you shape your investment plan. In your case, again, uh, you will have to define these priorities, right? Um, the, the ways of operating uh, of the Ministry of Environment is different from the Ministry of Food, so you will have to, to use your existing processes, right? And it will depend on the existing capacities, in the, including institutional capacities, right? So uh, again, you will have to decide on the objectives, on the main purposes of the CIP I was mentioning, on the definition, uh, you know, the, uh, the boundaries of, of your work, and on the format and the content. Um, so you have to develop your own CIP. But I just now want to, to move to the fourth part of it, which is uh, even if you it's in the CIP for environment forestry in Bangladesh would be different, but also in Myanmar, Tanzania, and Peru. I think we can still draw some lessons on, on the work we have been doing, which can be can be useful to uh, for you to, to to do this work, right? Um, the first one I call it cope. Uh, again, you need the commitment, ownership, partnerships, and engagement. The commitment by the government. You need I think you need advocacy to get the, the highest support. From, from the government, right? You need to, I don't know whether you can get the prime minister support or you can, I mean, it's important that there is a strong, uh, you know, uh, uh, commitment uh, and engagement at the highest level possible, uh, you know, to, to, to give a push also to the entire uh, government machinery, right? You need also commitment by the dev development partners. In, in, in your case, USID, I understand, is quite committed. So it's, a, it's already a very good, uh, uh, good uh, asset we have, but probably you, you need also to make sure that it is not only USID. I think it's, it's that it's also the other partners, uh, the EU, the, all the big guys, uh, you know, involved also in the, in the sector you are dealing with. Um, the ownership is, is very important uh, by, um, by the government, right? Uh, but also uh, the other stakeholders. Um, I think tomorrow we'll spend more time on, on the process and on the institu institutional setup. But it's important that, uh, uh, that there is a broad ownership uh, also with, with the uh, private sector, also in our case with farmers' organizations or representatives from the farmers or, of, or people who live from the forest. I mean, especially if you, if you want to address the issue of uh, forest encroaching by communities, I think you need to involve the communities, right? Um, and, and the ownership also is, 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 um, is strengthened through capacity development. And, uh, and uh, I, I'm glad to see that the concept of this project is very, is very sound because you, you, you link the development of a cap country investment plan with capacity development so that you make sure that the, uh, this is owned by, by, by the country, basically. And to ensure ownership, you need, you need communication, transparency, and accessibility. Everybody should, should be aware, should not I mean, the development of a CIP should not be done in a closed room like this one. <laughs> it should be you know, uh, through consultation and sh it should be shared on the web or, you know, as, as widely as possible. Um, you need also partnerships. Um, in our case, I mean, I feel we, we could not do it alone. Uh, in, in, in the case of food security and nutrition, we. Um, FAO was part of the, uh, what they call a local consultative groups. I think you have also for your sector on, on agriculture. And, and, and this was, through this, we communicated and we got also the support from, from all the UN agencies, from the financing institutions, and from the different stakeholders, right? So again, it's part of communication. 
and engagement of all. Uh, it's not only to communicate to them, but to make sure that there is uh, a good mechanism for uh, people to engage into the process. Right? Um, the second one is, is I think, to uh, not to, to prepare a, a CIP which is in the cloud. It's the CIP has to be really built on the existing uh, on the existing at the country level, right? We've, we've talked about the policies and the policy processes that are in place, uh, but uh, I see uh, a particular importance in Bangladesh, for instance, but maybe probably also in Myanmar and, and other countries. You have five-year plan, right? And the next five-year plan is about to start, I mean, the formulation. I think it's important that you link, you know, the, uh, the work you are doing with the five-year plan. It's important that the, the work you are doing is reflected in the five-year plan, because the five-year plan is, uh, is the main tool of the government to plan resources also for the future. So I think it's important to, uh, uh, to, make, to make the link here, to involve the Ministry of Planning, uh, so that you make sure that you are not doing a separate exercise from the five-year plan, right? Uh, you have to link also with the budgeting processes, right? Uh, I think it is very important. One of, uh, of the big challenges of FAO as a whole is that often we work with the Ministry of Agriculture on a technical basis, and we forget a little bit of Ministry of Forestry, sorry. <laughs> and we forget, you know, we forget the Ministry of Finance. You know, we say, okay, we have a technical role, but, but this exercise, if, if it has to succeed, you need, you need really to to make sure that the Ministry of Finance is involved. And, and, and we really make a lot of efforts to have them always on board, informing them, go to them, invite them, so that it doesn't come as a surprise to them, so that they are also owning part of the investment plan. It's not only a technical exercise, right? Um, you need to anchor it into the existing governance and coordination mechanisms. If you have some, you know, for, for climate change or the environment, then use these, these things. If you don't have, I think you have to work out something. But we'll talk uh, about more tomorrow about this about this thing. Um, and then the, the I mean the 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 main reason for for anchoring uh, the investment plan in the existing is to avoid duplication, not not to have yet another you know another kind of layer of strategic thing, but but really to add value to the existing framework, right? So again, uh, try to avoid duplications and, and, and rather identify entry points in, in the way things are, are designed for the sectors to, uh, to kind of consolidate this into one single plan, right? Um, again, the, um, the, 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 the concern of not trying not to keep um, the, the document on, in, in the shelf. Um, so again, we have to communicate widely. We have to mobilize the, the people uh, not only once, uh, but you know, on a regular basis to keep them informed, um, and for for this not to be kept in the in the, in the shelf, I think it has to be owned by the relevant institutions. It has to be led by them, initiated by them, and this is the case I understand here. Um, uh, it's, it should not be an, an FAO exercise. It should be you know a, a government exercise helped by FAO, right? Um, again, we have to link with the planning and budget processes. The monitoring system is key, and one of I think one of the issues of this investment plan is also sometimes in, in the context of the CADEP is that we produce investment plan and then we say, okay, we are finished, <laughs> and and this is the best way that these things you know uh, vanish. So uh, if there is a monitoring system, you keep it alive, right? Um, and you use it uh, concretely, you go and you use it for resource mobilization. You know, you, if it's a good quality document, uh, short, sharp enough, then it can be convincing for, for those who want to invest. Uh, keep it as a living document, uh, so I say relax. You don't, don't, don't think that you are going to write uh, something in golden letters. Um, and this uh, expression, living document, was actually formulated by the former minister of food. You know, he was saying, okay, let's Take it as a living document. You have something today. Maybe next year it will evolve in a different way. So we should not, we should not be too worried to have the perfect uh, and most comprehensive document. We should be able to update it uh, if and when needed. Right? Uh, for instance, the one we have here is, is, is already an updated version from the previous one one year late earlier because we found that something were missing. So. So we did another version in 2011, right? And then there will be the next one probably next year or something like that, right? Um, so link it to the budget and finance so that you can increase the, 
the amount of money available, again, the five-year plan and the uh, budgetary processes, but I will not come back to this one because I already mentioned. But again, it is, it is, it is so important that uh, I, I cannot uh, too emphasize, overemphasize it. The fifth lesson is the capacity development. Um, I think it's not enough to have a good uh, paper, a good policy and investment uh, framework. Uh, we, need, we need to uh, pay a lot of attention to strengthen the national capacities. Uh, and this has been the work of this project for the last eight years. And I think it's also one of the main uh, uh, features of your, of your project. Uh, so that you strengthen capacities in policy formulation, implementation, right? Um, in policy analysis, also, you know, generate some knowledge to, uh, to feed the, the, the policy dialogue. Um, to also, there is a lot of uh, work also which is being done. Uh, as a result of the investment plan, we, we, uh, the country mobilized some, some, some resources from uh, a global fund, which is the Global Agriculture and Food Security Program, right? They mobilized $50 million to help implement some of the activities from the CIP. And some of this uh, money was used for capacity development, in investment, project formulation, and implementation. Um, it's important to, to strengthen national capacities, not only in the public, but also uh, with the civil society. And uh, in the case of, uh, in, in our case, we, we spent some, a lot of attention to try to strengthen capacities of farmers' organizations, right? Uh, which I think are, uh, they, they are a very important uh, stakeholder in the process, right? Uh, so we need to strengthen the national systems, the institutions, the governance uh, mechanism. So we'll see tomorrow how, it's, how it is organized uh, in the case of food security and nutrition. Uh, and, and, but it is a result of years of capacity development in the Ministry of Food. Um, and capacity development, I am very keen on this one, is, is the exchange also between countries. And I'm, I'm glad that uh, you know we are one, two, three, four countries around the table because I think there is a lot of cross fertilization between the countries. Um, I was explaining I was I was in Bangkok last week where we we had uh, Myanmar, Bangladesh, Nepal, uh, Timor Leste, and uh, uh, what was uh, what was the last country uh, where we basically exchanged the um, the experiences on food security and, and and especially on the on this work, and it was very, very useful for, for the countries around the table. Um, OK. Uh, now, um, I think the, the how to say, the, um, this is a result of, of a process. But um, the, the, the result is quite important, because it's a, it's a tool which the government can use. But I think as, uh, as important as the result itself is the process through which you get you get to that, right? Um, because uh, I think if if it's uh, one or two consultants uh, going to a hotel and, and write a plan during two weeks and then going back or whatever, it's not going to, to make it, right? I think you need to, to make sure that this is developed as a result of a wide consultation process, which is inclusive of, every, of, of, of big stakeholders, uh, which is transparent, open, through a good communication, and which enable policy dialogue, and as I, as I was saying, also sometimes debate. You know, they, not all of the meetings were quiet because people were fighting around the table, but it's normal, right? And uh, everybody, uh, I mean, the participation is, is, is very important to, um, to agree on the, on the common objectives, right? Uh, I think this is probably one of the first steps of the, of, um, of the, of the work, but also, as, uh, as I was saying before, to prioritize investments and actions. Um, the, we were also uh, supported by USID in our case, I was saying, right? And, and uh, this was one of their main concerns. It was to say, we don't want brick thing that, that is never going to be implemented. We want something with priorities. And the way to get priorities is to, to bring the people around the same table and to openly discuss the issues. You know, we have to basically uh, uh, use this dialogue to say, OK, listen, what are the key, key priorities? Because otherwise people, you know, if you consult people, they will say, OK, uh, <laughs> we'll have a list of, of 20 things to say, we want to do this. And then another department, we want to do this. And you end up with, with 2,000 2, type of items. You need to say, OK, what, what is really, what has to be, to be included in the, sorry, in the investment plan? And it's important for mutual action accountability between the different stakeholders. 
that's my <laughs> last. Uh, I come back to my stupid animals. So we, we, you know, they, on the left hand side, you can see a, a drawing saying, why should we make simple if we can make it complicated? I say the other way around. We should, as much as possible, every time try to make it as simple as possible. Obviously, it's not it's not a it's not a simple exercise because it's a multi-sector and you are many. But that's why um, those who are steering uh, steering this this uh, this exercise, they they should they should try to every time to keep it as as concise and as as short as possible, right? And as simple as possible, right? Okay. Now the, my last slide is and it's um, we discussed with, with with Marco on Friday uh, and Prabhu. Is, is that uh, we, uh, now I understand there might be a little bit of discussions around the table, uh, around a few questions that maybe uh, arose from, from this presentation. Uh, so the existing policy framework, maybe, maybe we can skip that question because I understand that, that each country already identified the relevant uh, policies and, and, and policy context. Uh, but one of the big issues, I think what, what do you think, uh, in, in your case, should be the main purpose of the CIP? Is resource mobilization, harmonization? Is it to uh, coordinate uh, you know, actions? Is it to, uh, well, uh, to better use the resources? Yes, you want to? OK. Well, I wanted right. to say, I think these are questions we pose to the group. Right. right, yes, sure. But before we go there, yeah. I wonder if they might have questions for sure. you right. in terms of your presentation, because you covered a lot of material. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's well, uh, I, know I, I, I went I too many questions far. myself. Also, okay, but okay, uh, okay. I think it might be helpful right. um, before we, we sort of offer them sure, this okay, yeah. for reflection. Right. If they have any questions themselves in terms of what, what Benoit has covered. 